12-cylinder twin-turbo four-stroke diesel engine called the Prime Mover is the power source for this locomotive. Fuel is supplied from reinforced wall tanks mounted beneath the underframe. These tanks can carry 5,300 gallons of fuel. The fuel injection system has a pump for each cylinder bank. With multi-walled tubing between cylinders designed to handle high pressure, to decrease noise levels and increase efficiency, as many as eight different injections of fuel are made during a single combustion cycle, as determined by sensors in the fuel system. Engine support components are mounted nearby, including a lube oil tank and oil filters, fuel filters, and more. Turbocharging. This engine has two turbochargers to efficiently supply the engine with more air for combustion. There's a charge air cooler nearby to cool turbo air before it reaches the engine, since cold air is more dense and better suited to the goal of pumping more air into the engine. The charge air cooler has two sides, one for each turbo. These turbos are arranged in what's called a compound sequential configuration, which functions as follows. At lower RPMs, exhaust gases can more easily spin up the smaller turbo, whose compressor wheel begins to take in air. Air enters through a side port and flows through the large turbo before entering the small turbo. It's then cooled on its way to the engine intake. The large turbo is not yet fully powered. As RPMs and resulting available exhaust energy increase, a valve opens, spinning up the large turbo. While the small turbo is easier to rotate at lower RPMs, it's also designed to handle higher overall pressures. As such, the large, low-pressure turbo now directly feeds all of its air to the smaller, high-pressure turbo, and the whole system delivers maximum airflow to the engine for peak performance. To dramatically reduce certain pollutants and exhaust gases, these diesel engines are equipped with an EGR, or exhaust gas recirculation system. A valve allows exhaust from the left cylinder bank to enter the EGR system, where it passes through a water cooling unit before being mixed with fresh incoming air, sending some exhaust gas back through the combustion process, lowers combustion efficiency in favor of greatly reducing exhaust pollutants overall. Water. To save costs and avoid potentially hazardous antifreeze leaks, water is used for various cooling duties. A large tank holds nearly 400 gallons of water. An engine-driven water pump supplies pressure to the system. There are large banks of radiators with external shutters to help manage airflow. An oversized fan pulls outside air past these radiators as water courses through internal tubes. This cooling water flows to the engine, EGR cooler, turbochargers, air compressor, and more. During cold weather, it also runs through the fuel system preheater to warm the fuel before combustion. If the locomotive is not running and temperatures drop below 40 degrees Fahrenheit, Automatic water dump valves open, draining the system to prevent freezing. Electrical. The diesel engine turns a massive alternator, which acts as a generator, supplying electrical power to critical systems. The alternator has its own dedicated blower for cooling with a side air intake. The locomotive isn't directly mechanically driven by the engine. Instead, large electrical motors, called traction motors, are connected at each wheel axle, 
and provide the main driving force to move the train. These traction motors require fine-tuned speed control. Without getting into too much detail, it's simply easier to regulate variable motor speed with DC current as opposed to AC. As such, a fairly intricate conversion process takes place from the alternator to the traction motors. AC power from the alternator is converted to DC power as it flows through rectifier banks in the auxiliary cab section of the locomotive. A DC link in the same system smooths out any uneven power from the alternator and adjusts power to the desired speed or frequency. Current then flows through inverters which convert it back to AC as it's delivered to the motors. New technology makes varying AC current more doable and this process may change in the near future. These traction motors generate a lot of heat during operation. There's a dedicated air blower system with ducting and flexible connections to deliver cooling air to each individual motor. Banks of batteries sit underneath the aux cap. Apart from expectable battery duties like starting the diesel engine, these batteries can also deliver power for moving the locomotive small distances, for example around a rail yard, without having to start the diesel engine. 